Good morning. Welcome to NAB 2023. My name is Jason Metcalf, and I am the solutions architect for the Cinematic Productions Group within Sony Electronics Professional. We want to thank you for joining us at the start of what will surely be one of our most exciting NABs to date. Throughout this week, this stage will showcase a Sony-focused approach to virtual production with participation across several Sony group companies in what is surely the best example of Sony realizing its stated purpose to fill the world with emotion through the power of creativity and technology. For decades, Sony has been at the forefront of innovation in entertainment technology, enabling some of the key technical milestones in our recent history, such as production and exhibition of digital cinema, cinematic stereoscopic filmmaking, as well as innovations in animation, motion and facial capture, and advanced IP-based and remote production infrastructure. This week, we will showcase the results of our most recent work in the area of advanced real-time production, including cinematic virtual production and augmented reality for live broadcast, and demonstrate new components to support an in-camera VFX workflow with the initial releases in our virtual production toolset. Soon, you'll hear from two other groups within Sony beside myself, each doing innovative work in this space. Pixamondo, an award-winning virtual production and VFX company, and Sony Innovation Studios, who are developing future entertainment technologies and advanced virtual, virtual production workflows and tool sets. As many of you know, Sony Electronics is in a unique position as the only manufacturer who has expertise in both imaging with high-end broadcast and digital cinema cameras supported by our sensor technology, and displays with our family of best-in-class crystal LED products. On set, you will see the Sony Venice 2 in Rialto format. The Sony Venice and Venice 2 have been used on some of the most successful films of the era. The Venice is an easy choice for cinematographers with its 16 stops of dynamic range, color rendition, and ease of use features. In addition to the camera, Sony also creates the Crystal LED B series, a display that is purpose-built for virtual production. It features a fine pixel pitch, anti-reflective matte surface to maximize in-camera performance. By leveraging our knowledge of both camera and display, we are able to create tools that confront some of the most common challenges in virtual production, the culmination of which is our new virtual production tool set, which you'll be able to see demonstrated right here. These advancements have been the result of extensive collaboration with groups from within Sony, as well as our partners and friends across the industry, like Epic Games, Lux Machina, Moses, Lightyear, and Cartoni. Together, we hope to support the next generation of real-time production through the advanced capabilities of Sony technology and the vision of creators. Now I'd like to welcome Josh Karakes, head of virtual production at Pixamondo. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Welcome to NAB, everyone. So we are Pixamondo. My name is Josh Karakis. I've been at the company for just shy of four years now. We are a full-service Oscar and Emmy award-winning visual effects company that very recently, in the past four years, have pivoted very much into virtual production. And all the various facets within virtual production. So we were founded in 20, 2001 and have seven studios across the world right now, as well as three large LED volumes. And we do multiple pop-up productions as well. We're currently headquartered in London, and we have offices across North America and Europe as well. Now, quickly, I'd like to show uh, a bit of a sizzle reel just to get you a feel for some of the work that we're doing within the virtual production space. So if you wouldn't mind queuing that up for us. What happened before no longer exists. That is our greatest advantage. What we do now, here in this moment, has the power to determine the future.
Thank you. So that was our in-camera visual effects reel. A lot of that was shot, um, gosh, almost three years ago now. Um, so we're very much looking forward to updating our new reel with uh, content as it gets released. We have uh, quite a few additional recent credits here, as you can see behind me. We're very excited to, be, to begin to show some of the new work that we're doing within the virtual production space. So largely right now, we've been talking about in-camera visual effects. So filming on LED screens and getting in-camera finals, which is very much our primary goal. But virtual production is much more than that. And I wanted to kind of briefly break down some of our services and show where the value in VP can really be found. Pixamondo, one of the reasons our, our, our approach in virtual production coming as a visual effects vendor has always been kind of the end result. We care most, f first and foremost about the quality of the end visuals, but also that the key creatives, our filmmakers, are able to get all, what they want, um, be that from a pre-visualization perspective to in-camera finals to post-production traditional visual effects workflows. Um, so we really want to embed ourselves and become that creative partner to help filmmakers realize their vision. And that always starts within pre-production. So we, our artists, our team, our, our creatives are embedded with the art department, with the showrunners, going, taking everything from concept, um, so from visualization into realization. So um, starting from pre-production, um, from technical to creative consultation, um, to pre-vis to visualization, which all should seamlessly feed into virtual production. Um, this is what will inform whether we use in-camera visual effects techniques, real-time compositing techniques, or we simply just do things in post-production. Um, our, our goal is ultimately just to find what is the right path there. Um, now, we are a visual effects company, but we do a lot more than that. Um, we also uh, design, build, and operate multiple LED volumes as well. And the reason why we got into um, the hardware side of things and the software design as well is, again, just to preserve the quality throughout the entire pipeline. Um, so this does feed heavily into the pre-production portion. And then once we move into set, um, our, some of our operators here uh, will work with the, with, with the creatives to ensure that yeah, all, all in-camera finals are captured and look great. Um, one of the key considerations, though, is when we wrap on set, we're not done yet. And because we're also a post-production vendor doing traditional visual effects, we need to make sure that there's a seamless handshake between the ICVFX portion and the traditional post-production portion. Um, and that's really, really where a lot of value can be found. So we want to design a cohesive pipeline that allows us to go from stage to studio and post-production after the fact. And here's just a brief example of uh, a few shows that we have done that on. So Star Trek Discovery, season th four and five, and Strange New Worlds, seasons one through going into three right now, where we work with the production designer, the art directors, the director, the DP, to, to visualize and determine whether something is, is a suitable fit for in-camera visual effects, to completely set the look and, and front load a lot of that work so that when we arrive on set, we know exactly what we want, and we're able to capture our day um, with very little headache. So we do the pre-production, the physical production, in this case, very heavily on ICVFX, and then also the post-production traditional visual effects rendering as well. And I wanted, if you could queue up the next reel, just wanted to quickly show some of the behind the scenes of us building stages and operating them.
So lastly, before I go, um, I did want to mention, uh, so we were acquired by Sony um, in October of last year. And uh, so being welcomed into the Sony family has been a fantastic experience. We've already been longtime collaborators and very much fans of many Sony products. So now we've got a much closer working relationship, which has been very exciting. And so up next, um, we have Tobias and Chris. And, uh, but very briefly before they come on stage, we're going to queue up a video f uh, for you. But, uh, so if you can queue that up now. Hey everyone, thank you Josh, that was awesome, looked good. Uh, and thank you all for coming and stopping by today. Uh, my name is Tobias, I'm the head of software and tech development at Sony Innovation Studios. I'm here with Chris. Uh, Christopher Probst, ASC. Uh, I'm a working cinematographer and chief innovative officer at Synapse Virtual Production, a little side uh, company that I'm working with in the virtual production sphere. Uh, and what you just saw here was a few clips from early virtual production uh, projects that we did using our proprietary rendering technology called AdamView. Uh, it's a volumetric renderer uh, based on point clouds, which allows us to get really fine superior details in our 3D scenes. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, but Chris, uh, he was involved in shooting our early projects using AdamView and this technology. And maybe you wanna... Yeah, I think my involvement with Sony Innovation is going on five years now. Um, initially in 2019, I was brought in. We created a, um, a demonstration of Adam View for uh, CES uh, 2020, and they brought, um, we actually got the Ecto-1 uh, Ghostbusters vehicle outside of Ivan, Ivan Reitman's office in, on the production um, Sony lot. And we filmed the scene with the Ecto-1 in front of the office, and then we also LiDAR captured that environment to recreate it in Adam View uh, and the gaming engine and bring that actually to CES and bring the actual vehicle onto the, the floor in Las Vegas. And then when you actually compare the footage of what we had shot live on the Sony lot and then what was actually photographed at CES, even as a cinematographer, I couldn't tell the difference of which was which, except for there was one augmentation on the scene. They had put a little uh, grate on a window in the background on the, um, on the virtual version, and that's the only way I could tell the two apart. But based on that experience and using uh, the tool set of AdamView and the resolution of point cloud data in the virtual sphere, um, that prompted Tobias to write and direct uh, a, a short film project that we then um, used to further expand the capability of showing what you could do with virtual production tools and trying out some a little bit more advanced techniques. I don't know, you want to talk about what you wanted to achieve with that project? Well, let's, uh, let's play it and then we'll take a... Yeah, we can show a clip of the project video, then. And then... One of the amazing things working with this technology is how easy it is to change around and play around with it and be creative on the spot. Gotta see it to the end. Working with the DP, you know, he wants to change the angle perhaps, change the lighting, change the scene. It's just done at a flick of a switch, really. There's no compositing here. It's all happening in camera through the optics of the lens. You are seeing the final composite VFX in camera live and knowing if it's working. The actor is actually seeing the content that they're being composited into.
got a, a three set and a cracker one. So at Sodi Innovation Studios, uh, we're all about innovation, of course. Uh, and one of the things that we really push for is the quality of 3D content. Uh, and we really want to redefine what's possible uh, to achieve creatively using technology. And so this project here, uh, the Desert Light, really came from that mindset. We want to show what's possible with a relatively small footprint that we had at the time. Uh, the stage were about this size. But I want to show that through the, you know, some creative thinking and the use of technology, you can achieve something much bigger, something that feels much more organic. Uh, and I wanted a, the virtual background not just to be a static background and try and change the perception of virtual production that you can have this immersive, organic feel um, with this technology. And so that's where the ideas of the flashlight, the bats you saw, the treadmill and sea movement came into play. Uh, and all of this was made possible with our Atom View renderer, together with our proprietary capture technology that we have, where we can go out, capture real sets, relocation out in the world. In fact, the scene that you saw here uh, was from Uncharted, the movie that we went and captured. And together with Atom View, we can bring it in uh, to a virtual set like this and effectively show and represent reality on screen. And Chris, yeah, you I, shot this. And anytime you, uh, you base uh, environmental assets on real photography, um, LiDAR scans, real geometry, it's just that much better in terms of uh, creating a convincing uh, in-camera visual effect. That coupled with the actual uh, crystal uh, LED panels, I'm not limited as a cinematographer in terms of battling uh, the, the panel technology, specifically in terms of the pixel pitch. Uh, the, the B series is a 1.5 millimeter pixel pitch, so actually in that project, I'm not trying to like overemphasize the depth of field to force the, those panels out of focus to, uh, to avoid more ray. I'm actually doing narrative focus pulling to the panels. So when our character, our, 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 our female Indiana Jones character is actually looking at the panels and we're behind her shoulder, we actually rack focus to the content and actually are showing it in focus in camera without inducing any more ray. And then she turns and brings a flashlight uh, back to the lens and we rack focus. So I'm using the actual focus now as a storytelling tool and not having to, to fight the technology. And even the screen that we had on that short film uh, was not much larger than this. And we built all, this, all the sequence we designed and tried to create this sort of Spielbergian language, Raiders of the Lost Ark homage. And it, it feels much larger than the footprint. We had a 20 by uh, steel deck stage that we dressed with sand and we created a sand dune. Then we brought in props and built this sort of Egyptian tomb set. But it was all confined to one 15 by 20 foot uh, LED wall behind there as sort of a proof of concept of what we can do. But then we're like, what can we do to make more of this? So we blocked out all these sort of coverage. We, we have every sort of angle of this theoretical amphitheater that she's walking through covered. But then we wanted to have actual tracking shots. So we encoded a treadmill. And that drove the content within the gaming engine so that she's walking. She's actually not just stopping in place, but she's actually walking as she would. But the content is being driven by the pace of her walk in camera. And then on top of that, I wanted to actually have the lighting interact with our environment. So then we've actually tracked with the tracking system uh, the flashlight that we had, and we coupled that with the virtual flashlight in the gaming engine so that when she pointed the flashlight at the environment, it actually cast a, a virtual flashlight beam on the environment. And that sort of um, incorporation of tying the, the, the foreground with the virtual backgrounds is super exciting as a cinematographer because I'm not trying to... Um, fix it in post or I'm gathering it in camera. The whole idea of in camera visual effects is that you're getting final pixel right on there. So I didn't have to compromise any sort of aspects of the filmmaking aside from trying to figure out how to contain it within a 15 by 20 foot area, which then um, sort of prompted the next level iteration of this exploration that Tobias and I have been doing is, okay, um, we showed what we can do in this very limited footprint what, what, what's the next sort of evolution of that? What's the next evolution? Yeah, let's take a look at that and see where we're going next.
on in there? What's going on in there? Uh, so one thing we decided very early on, uh, before, even with the smaller uh, footprint that we had, is that we wanted to work with the Sony panels because of their superior picture quality and, and color accuracy. Because we wanted, like Chris was saying earlier, we want to try and reduce the amount of post and color work that you have to do uh, so that what you see in camera is as close as it, you could get. Uh, so that's why we worked with Sony Tokyo uh, for close to two years developing and improving these panels for virtual production use. And they're effectively, they're coming from a color grading background. So they are very, very accurate. As Chris was mentioning, super high pixel pitch. And together with our rendering and our capture technology, we now have a, a, a tool set and a space where we can really explore and do creative work. And we did a project recently that uh, Chris shot again. And, we can't talk too much about that. Yeah, but you, can you talk. saw some of the BTS of it, but none of the characters in there because it's uh, still under NDA. But what's exciting about the actual volume space now is that we have a much bigger footprint to be able to do legitimate productions on. So, as again, the, the, sort of the next iteration of this exploration is pushing the boundaries of techniques of what we can do in there. Um, as an outside cinematographer coming into the Sony Innovation stages now and looking at the actual design and engineering behind the actual volume space. Um, I, haven't, I haven't experienced this equal in town or, or anywhere I've, I've traveled in the world. Um, first off, by having full resolution ceiling with a very um, integrated uh, merging of the wall to the ceiling. Um, I've gone into various levels of stages where they either tell you, oh, no one wants to shoot the ceiling, so we don't even put up a ceiling. Or we have a product up there that's not the same pixel pitch, so it, you can't shoot it. Therefore, I won't shoot it because I, I, I'm going to have to do all sorts of post-production to clean it up. Uh, and so if, if I'm not given the option to shoot, shoot the ceiling, how am I going to shoot the ceiling? But in here, we have the same resolution on the wall, 1.5 millimeter, as on the ceiling as well. So I'm able to frame up any shot. And who, who's to say that the director or the cinematographer doesn't want to get a low angle and, and, and get that transition in camera and not have to do uh, extensive work in post-production to fix those aspects? Um, so I feel very uh, free in terms of being able to tell the story visually any way I want. I'm not battling the depth of field for more array. I'm not battling the actual architecture and design of the volume space or, the, or a lack of a ceiling. Um, they built an entire structure around of catwalk uh, around the actual volume to allow access at any level to be able to incorporate additional lighting if you wanted to bring in a much brighter like daylight projection through there. You can easily pull panels. It's really well organized and designed. Um, so coming into that space and doing a, this recent uh, project, it was really uh, kind of the, the next fulfillment of it, literally the innovation of what Sony's bringing with the merging of the camera, the panels, and the processes. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. And to, to the point of the freedom that you're talking about, that is actually one of our key goals uh, at Innovation Studios. As much as we're about innovating and technology, like that's what we live for, but we don't want the creators to be limited by like that. Uh, we don't want them to come in and like, what is this, what's happening, what do I need to do? We want it to be as seamless and flexible as possible so that people like Chris can come in, oh, you know what, I want to shoot against the ceiling, I want to do this, I want to be low, I want to be high, and we go, yeah, of course, you can do that here. We want the technology to get out of the way, but we want it to be empowering so that the creatives can basically realizing and bringing their imagination to life. Um, so that's uh, what we're all about. So then what's next with you? So what's next is that uh, in addition to the innovation and technology that we're always pushing for, uh, now that the stage is opening up, we are getting a lot of projects coming in. We have one coming up next week or the week after, and we're in talk with uh, many uh, TV and movie productions. So it's really starting to kick off. I know we have Nicole Franco here. She's the head of our production operations. She'll happily talk with any, anyone who's interested in uh, getting going. And yeah, you'll, you'll easily spot Nicole because she was our... Uh, She's the hero in the movie as well. What, what is the uh, feminized version of Indiana Jones here? You know? well, Laura Croft, maybe? Yeah, Laura Croft, the oh, yeah. character, yeah. But uh, we've abused her on camera several times because uh, as a producer, she didn't have any budget to, to, to put an actor in, so she volunteered herself. Uh, in the most recent project, we had her uh, doing all sorts of stunt work and wire work, uh, so I think she regretted that, uh, being subjected <laughs> to my uh, cinematographic pu punishments. But uh, yeah. yeah. That was good. Yeah. All right. That's it for Thank us. You Thank so you so much, much for stopping yeah. by.